Let's look at the World Wide Web from a social standpoint now. So I'll introduce you to a kind of philosophy that I use commonly in this class, and that's to say that if you want to understand a new technology, look at it in terms of the things that human beings have been doing since time began. Because we're doing the same things we've been doing since time began, we'll be doing them until time ends. That's just kind of how we are. We're people. And we use these different technologies to do things that we've always wanted to do. What do, have we always wanted to do that we use the World Wide Web to do? The answer, I think, is pretty clear. It's communicate. Human beings have always communicated. They've always going to communicate. Right now, the hot new thing to communicate is the World Wide Web. Right? That's a big deal. We can, we can do a lot of communication on there. Um, before, it was other media. After, it'll be other media still. So the World Wide Web is a communication media. If you want to understand communication, if you want to understand the World Wide Web, think about communication. What's communication? Well, some people are talking. Some people are listening. There may be people responding. The same people who talk may respond. They, they may talk and then listen, right? All those, that's how we communicate. Very simple. And in all cases, I want you to use that simple understanding or gain a simple understanding and then use that simple understanding to pull very complicated things apart, like Facebook. Let's pull Facebook apart using those simple concepts. People speaking, people listening, and people replying or responding, right? Can you see already where I'm going with this? Look at a Facebook page. On the Facebook page, you can type in something about yourself. That's you speaking. You can reply to somebody else. That's you um, replying. You can simply read things that other people read and or wrote and then or, or uploaded. And you're a listener. So those are the three things you do. You're either listening, speaking, or replying to somebody else's speech, right? And we've already and, we, and you can see how how quickly we could use that to understand what's going on, on the Facebook page. We can look at all the different areas and say, okay, this is a speaking area. This is a responding area. This is a this is a listening place. Maybe and we could maybe even suggest enhancements to Facebook based on that idea. How often do you want to speak? How often do you want to listen? Um, how, what, are the current, what are the common patterns of speaking and listening? Should we facilitate those inside of Facebook? So we have this idea of speaking, listening, and, um, and replying as a way of understanding what's going on on the web. And we'll look at lots of different technologies, and you use that same method over and over again to understand those technologies. Okay, that's A. B, we've got to talk a little bit about why do we communicate at all? What's the purpose? Why, when you look at a website or when you look at a... Um, uh, an inner, any other kind of you know application that you look at that you that you can look at, uh, what what's it trying to do? What are the what are the different things that it might be trying to elicit in you? Okay, so I have again a very simple model that I'll present to you that'll give you a way of thinking about it. When we communicate, either interpersonally or broadcast by you know talking to a lot of people or through Facebook or whatever, we have generally speaking four things in mind. We might want to educate somebody. We might want them to get, get them to understand something they don't already understand. We may just simply want to entertain them. And I don't need to tell you how much of the Internet is right around that one, right? It's right around entertainment. This part of the Internet that you happen to be on right now consuming this video is all about understanding, right? I want you to know something you didn't know before, and so I'm trying my hardest to get you to understand. I'm not particularly getting you, trying to entertain you, but I do try to put a little bit of entertainment in there just to, to make it more interesting, right? So all understanding and no entertainment isn't so interesting. All entertainment and no understanding is, uh, has its own problems. <laughs> okay, so understanding and entertaining. It may want you, it may get you, want, it, it may, the communication may be trying to get you to feel something. It may be trying to get you, to give you an emotional response, to, to, to give you some sense of awe or some sense of wonder or something like that. Something that's, that's deeply emotional or, and this is certainly the case in most commerce sites, and if you are, and if you're smart, you'll look for this in every single site that you go to. What's it trying to get me to do? When we consume communication, sometimes it causes us to act. It causes us to do something we wouldn't have otherwise done, like buy something, for example. So this is our way of understanding the World Wide Web from a social perspective. It's all about communication, speaking, listening, and responding. And the communication that goes on on the World Wide Web is all around the four big purposes of any communication, which is get you to understand something, um, entertain you, persuade, excuse me, get you to understand something, entertain you, get you to feel something, or make you do something. Okay? So that's the, that's the World Wide Web from a social perspective. It's all about communication, and the reasons we communicate are what we do on the web as well.